You know what really grinds my gears? No, what? When somebody's just riding the clutch really bad. I think you'll find that's actually grinding their gears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's... Hi, welcome back to Worth the Dream. I'm Grim. And I'm Red. This is your home for whiskey reviews, flexible opinions, and long, awkward pauses filled with lots of lip smacking. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people have pointed that out <laughs> after each sip, and we're, it's just 10 seconds of just that. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> for me. <laughs> I get a little... Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, today we're taking a look at Uncle Nearest, 1856. Premium whiskey. Premium whiskey. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. It's it's won quite a bit of awards uh, since it launched in 2017. Yep. Um, but it is uh, inspired by the story of uh, Nathan Green, who... Nathan Nearest Green, which is where the Uncle Nearest comes from. Yeah. Uh, Green was the first known African-American master distiller. Um, maybe even the, the best whiskey maker in, in the U.S. Hmm. Uh, so just to interrupt you real quick, this was a recommendation that we got, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so, friend of the show, Dennis, thank you very much. Uh, highly, highly recommended this. Um, and we've actually kind of had it, uh, you know, ready to go. We just had some, you know, donated bottles and things. So yep. this is the first chance we got to, uh, to get to this. But thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to get into it. I, yeah, I am. Um, so the um, Uncle Nearest... Incorporated, Uncle Nearest. Yep. Uh, Incorporated, the company that owns the Uncle Nearest brand, um, wholly owned, uh, all minority-led company. So Nathan Green was a uh, African American slave uh, back in Tennessee in 1856. <laughs> um, on the Dale, uh, Dan Call Farm. On the, yeah, the the Dan Call. It was a Call. Yeah, farm? Call Farm. Dan Call Farm, uh, which Jack Daniels was working on uh, back in the day. Got to talking to uh, Dan Call about the whiskey he was he was uh, putting out, and he Dan Call introduced Jack Daniels to Nathan Green, his uh, master distiller. Um, so Green actually taught Jack Daniels the um, what's known today as the Lincoln County process, which is the filtering through sugar maple charcoal. Mm -hmm. uh, as the whiskey gets put into the barrels, it's filtered through that. Uh, Yep. Sugar maple charcoal. And I think, so this is the, this is our first Lincoln County whiskey or Lincoln County process it distilled is. whiskey that we've actually tried so yeah. far. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really is. It's, it's crazy to think about since Tennessee whiskey is a big, yeah. we've talked about Tennessee whiskey, but this is our first Lincoln County. Yeah. So the Uncle Nearest company is actually, uh, you know, kind of called attention to and, and confirmed that the Lincoln County process uh, was actually brought to Tennessee by African American slaves. Um, that's very and interesting. That's, you know, that's how Nathan Green learned it, and then that's how he then passed it on to Jack Daniels, and then it became, you know, what it is today. So, um, really, you know, if you're a fan of whiskey in general, but if you're a fan of Tennessee whiskey, um, you got a lot, you know, there's a lot to be so the, thankful for to, yeah. and to I, Nathan I, Green. Especially, you know, if you're a fan of Tennessee whiskeys, then this, I'm expecting this to be a definitive uh, expression. Yeah. So... Uncle Nearest Incorporated is actually partnering with a few other distilleries in Tennessee to produce whiskey using the same in-state ingredients and methods that Uncle Nearest would have used Yeah. in his time. Yeah. So you did mention that they won multiple awards. Um, yeah. So Uncle Nearest is the most awarded uh, premium brand American whiskey. Um Garnering 75 awards since July 17 alone. Oh, wow. Which, I mean, that's when they debuted, but... Yeah, and they have, I think, multiple best of categories as well. Uh, yeah, actually. They have. Uh, they were one of two brands that received the world's best nice. at Whiskey Magazine World Whiskey Awards. If I wasn't hyped before. I know. <laughs> I mean, th this hype is very, very real. So, yeah, you'd mentioned that um, they had partnered with different Tennessee distillers to create a blend because this brand again has only been around since 2017 yeah that what you said um so obviously you can't age at eight to 14 year whiskey correct um and so they're working with some 
other um, distillers in Tennessee. I know Dickles is one of them. Yes. Dickle, George Dickle. If you um, remember the uh, hot Dickle that we tried. Hot Dickle, yeah. <laughs> um, that is one of them. Um, so they, they source the whiskey, um, but then they also go through their own filtering process. You know, the uncle nearest um, owned, patented um, filtering process, which is supposed to change the flavors pretty um Dramatically? Dramatically. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <sighs> uh, the heat is getting to me a little bit. It, it, yeah, we just had a storm roll through, and we you've heard us complain about the heat and the humidity in my now garage. It's, now it's humid. Um, yep. But I, th- I could have sworn you said it was nicer out here like 20 it, minutes ago. It was. <laughs> then, then, the, then it got worse. It got a lot worse. <laughs> uh, so, a little more history Yeah. before we, re- before we get into these. Uh, one thing that I would that I I'm really really excited to point out is that uh, so the Uncle Nearest Incorporated actually purchased the 313 acre farm that Dan Colley stone where yeah. Jack Daniels faithfully met with Nathan Green and started this whole history. Um, they've even gone so far as to employ Nathan Green's some of Nathan Green's remaining descendants. Yeah. Including his great great granddaughter Victoria Edie Butler. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I think they also don't they also have a uh, so a scholarship program for yeah Nathan actually Green's, yes uh, descendants as well, which is awesome. Yep, and not just not just his descendants, yeah, but actually but... it is a it is a minority driven scholarship. Yeah, the, the process that Nathan Green followed is like a fourteen day process for filtering. Yeah, um, it's a very it's like it's like a very very slow drip distillation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what Uncle Nearest follows. Um, this is 100 proof, which I think is... This is the highest proof that we've done so highest far. Highest proof we've done for sure, but I think that's that's also because this was the proof that that, that Uncle Nearest was, was putting out yep. um, on the Dan Call Farm. So um, it's a blend of... Did we mention blend of 8 and 14 year whiskeys? Yeah, you touched together. on it briefly, but that's... Um, I mean, with the mash bill is kind of unknown. It really is. It's just a mystery blend of eight to 14 year aged whiskeys. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like you can see that age plus yeah. probably most likely the Lincoln County filtration. Yeah. That color. It's beautiful. <laughs> every time, every time now we hold the glasses up and I say that color, like I imagine that scene <laughs> with our wives making fun of us. Uh, it looks like deep applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> Uh, no, that's that's just that's like a rich, rich color, amber. It smells oh, good. Oh man, um, just oak and corn right off the bat. For me, you know, I am getting a little cinnamon. Cinnamon? Yeah, which is, I mean, that kind of stands out because, you know, we've mentioned cinnamon, but we never yeah. actually got any cinnamon since before. Yeah, since since before when? Since. The, like what? What? <laughs> Did I say since before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I get oak and, and corn right off the bat as the two. Yeah. Uh, you can tell it's a hundred proof. I get oak, corn, um, and then some sweetness on the back end. Yep. Um, and just maybe just there's like this subtle toasted. Um, just toasted scent, and I don't know if it's toasted. It's not oak. It's not. It's almost. It's almost just toast. Are you feeling right? Oh yeah, you got, no, you got, any, you got any pain in your left arm? No, <laughs> you smelling burnt toast. I'm not smelling burnt toast. <laughs> I just said toasted. So I'm, I'm not, not picking that up. I'm I so I I feel like once I once I landed on that cinnamon, yeah, like that kind of and maybe it's it's that's not the strongest scent, but yeah. like it's there. Oh yeah, it's like a subtle like it's like on the back end of everything else you're yeah. smelling. So maybe I'm I'm calling that toast and you're calling that cinnamon. Maybe. All right. Do you want do you want to? I'm super excited. Let's do it. Let's do this. Here comes that long awkward pause. <laughs> Well, you weren't kidding. I just want to enjoy that. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, man. So for being the, the highest proof we've tried, you wouldn't know it. So I, I'm on the other side there. Yeah. So I, it didn't, it didn't hit me in the on the nose. Yeah. That it would be a higher proof, but it certainly tastes like it. Yeah. And that is. Wow. I mean, I got some warmth. Yeah, that is really pleasing. I got some warmth right here. And it's not. I mean, all right. So I feel like this is something that my wife would say. Burns like the bowels of hell. <laughs> but that's more so because she doesn't. She's not a whiskey fan. Yeah. I just, man, that is just, that is a cozy blanket. It's a, ple it's a pleasing, like it's a pleasing yeah. warmth is what I get when I drink it. And that's not, like I said, I, when I think 100 proof or higher, I think of, I'm going to breathe fire. Yeah. Um, this is not that. This is like the, you, like, uh, like you banked a fire and it's just coals or embers. So I'll tell you this, I get, <clears throat> I get a lot of oak on the back end. Like that really, it really, really comes through. And you know what? So we read in the tasting notes that there's like a an air and a, and a flavor of old candy. Yeah. Old, spelt, old. <laughs> Oldie. And I, I didn't know what that was going to be, but it's there. Yeah. I still can't define it. It's just a sweetness. Um, a sweetness, but like, so there's, a, there's a, a candy shop that my wife and I go to in Plastow, New Hampshire, and they still use the old processes for yeah. making like saltwater taffy and homemade yeah. chocolates and fudge. And that's, there's something about those. Almost like raw sugar, like. Yes. Not the super processed. Yeah. Super refined sugar, just that raw sugar sweetness. It's sugar in the raw. Like, like it's not. It's the little it's, brown packets it, that you see at Starbucks. Yeah. It is sweet. Fancy. But it's not like refined sugar where you can feel your teeth rotting away. Yeah. Yep. Like, but it's subtle. In this, it's. Oak, I'll go back to that old candy. That old candy mm -hmm. kind of subtleness rides through. This is, you know what, this, we talked about way, way back, episode one, like what it reminds you of. And it's not always what the flavors or like the the mouthfeel reminds you of, but it's like the memories. Actually, yeah. we had a, uh, uh, one of our guests, Kyle, you know, he had uh, the Lagavulin that takes him back to his home state. This reminds me of my great grandmother's apple pie. Yeah. And she, oh man, she made the hell out of that apple pie. <laughs> yeah. That thick. Yeah. yeah. And she made it old style. Um, the more I drink this, um, and and I want to finish this glass pretty quickly here, but um, I get more that that old candy sweetness transforms a little bit more into like caramel and maybe those more traditional bourbon flavors. Yeah. Um, so it's like... That old, so I, I'm stuck in that old candy, but I'm trying to apply a term to it, like old, yeah. like toffee or yeah, um, raw sugar. Yeah, I think <laughs> you know, when you when you when you first said raw sugar, I think you nailed it. Yeah, um, like a burnt raw sugar. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely still got the oak. Um, for me, it's it's. I'm gonna take another drink. I get the oak first, but it fades pretty quickly into that sweetness. Yeah. Um, and then the finish is just a um, breathing oak and caramel, vanilla, just like classic almost bourbon flavors. Yep. Coming out. It's a Tennessee whiskey, though. Yeah. Be careful. I know it's a Tennessee whiskey, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's all the... It meets the criteria for a bourbon. Yeah, it's it's a, a subcategory of bourbons. They're, yeah. It's a half category? It's a half category. It's technically a bourbon, but it's really not because... It went through the Tennessee County process. Yeah, Tennessee distillers really don't like calling their whiskeys bourbons. Thank, I mean, you, I, thank you for recommending it, Dennis. Yeah, I had... Um, I had I'd say reasonable expectations, but they've, they've, they're blowing them out of the water. Uh... I feel bad. Why? Because Dennis recommended this, but this was bought to us, bought for us by somebody. It is and a donated I have bottle. Not mentioned it, and I feel really bad now. Thank you, Mom. Yes. For buying this bottle for us. Thank you, uh, Mrs. It, Red. It was on our list. It's been highly recommended to us. Uh, so, by my nearest estimation, that was a weird cut. 
<laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> you were lucky I put carpet down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that landed screen side down. Yep, that was a, that was a good landing. Whew. The otter box comes in handy. Yeah. When you want to start filming and throw your phone on the ground. Yep. So it's been about 10 minutes? Yeah, minutes? it's a little warm it's, out here. It's so. warm, so we, we accelerated the, the yeah. timeline a little bit. Yeah. Which, I mean, not just because of how warm it is, because I really didn't... I wanted to come right back to these. Yeah. I wasn't feeling it. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just good. Uh, man, that smells good. <clears throat> Hold on. I can't for the... for All right, so for a wild lack of a better term... Yeah. It's almost musky after sitting. Musky. Are I'd you say, sure that's not me? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> it could be. I just stepped on my phone. <laughs> anyway, so I think I think more of that oak is actually coming through. Yeah. After after resting, yeah. But aside from that, it might be. I mean, we've I think we've said this for every second glass that it's a little milder after sitting, and I think that's yeah. That's just by chemical nature. Yeah. I mean, that little bit of bite. Um, that I first got when I was like, you could tell it's a hundred proof. That's gone. Yep. Um, and then I feel like that cinnamon scent is gone. Yeah, I don't get that toasted, that toasted scent anymore. Maybe if I look for it. Um, but yeah, oak. I still get oak. I don't see it. I get a little bit of corn. You don't see it? <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to taste. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you're ready to yeah, taste. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Still get that warmth, that just low burn. Not not burn. Burn's the wrong word. Warmth, just that warmth in my chest. If that was silk before, it's warm Teflon now. Like it's just, <laughs> it's just frictionless. Oof. Yeah. Um, I think I still get oak first with a taste. <clears throat> I'd, you know what? The oak is actually that's riding a lot stronger now in the second glass. Yeah. Yeah. And then that corn sweetness, and then those bourbon flavors again. Just kind of ride through that finish. Finish is a little bit shorter, even after just 10 minutes of sitting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but man, that's that's good. So I think, I can't remember if I mentioned in the first glass, but I didn't really I didn't really pick up the higher proof on the nose. Yeah. It's definitely there in the in the taste. Yeah. Uh, after, so after sitting, like you said it was, it was silk. Uh, right from the bottle. Yeah. Uh, and it's Teflon now. Um, warm Teflon. Cashmere. Cashmere? Smooth. Ooh, cashmere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oaky, corn, sweetness. Um, I did say Teflon, but yeah, I'd like to say cashmere because cashmere is arguably sexier than Teflon. Yeah. It's <laughs> also a very good song. <laughs> You're right. It is. <laughs> so cashmere it is. Yeah. Warm cashmere. Very warm cashmere. <laughs> no, it's, it's really warm back here. Um, <laughs> I honestly don't know if I like it better right from the bottle or after sitting. I could take it either way. Uh, that's what she said. You... <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said it. <laughs> it's delicious straight from the bottle. You know what? This one might come down to how are you feeling. Yeah. Um, I'd say, you know what? I'd, obviously, if you're going to get into a couple glasses, obviously do what we did. Yeah. Uh, try them both. I actually, I reckon, this is one that I do recommend. Try them both. Yeah. Try them both ways. Um, I, Go ahead. That's what she said. Thank again. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's really good after sitting. It's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit smoother. Um, smoother is subjective, but it's yeah. a little bit smoother. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I like the, 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 the intensities of the flavor are a little bit less. Um, yeah, I said it, it, everything kind of is, is subdued after sitting. Yeah. But it's, it's still, you still get that oak corn sweetness, um, you know, kind of traditional bourbon flavors on the finish. Um, even after sitting, they're just a little bit stronger right from the glass. So it, at this point, I mean, if you decide to go pick up a bottle of this, or if you have a bottle already, I agree. Try it. 
try it straight from the bottle and then try it sitting a little bit. Yeah. Um, Man, that is... Because uh, it's, it's delicious both ways. That's phenomenal. That, I mean, well done. Hats off. That's really good. <laughs> that was a wet slap on the concrete. <laughs> Have we mentioned it's a little warm back here? A little bit. Um, so, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, 55 to $60. Um, I'd say worth premium it. Premium whiskey. I would say it's worth it's it. It's worth the price. Um, that, was, that was very, very, very good. Um, oak, corn, yep. sweetness, if, bourbon-y flavors. If you're a fan of whiskey straight... I'd say that's really who this is for. Like yeah. I, I can't recommend this in any mixed drinks at all. No. Um, I feel like this is this just needs to be partly, actually, a lot to do with the flavor profile, but also because of the history. Yeah. Like you, I feel like we're we're tasting history in 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 each sip. Oh um, no, yeah, and I hundred percent agree. <clears throat> and um, Uncle Nearest as well as Jack Daniels uh, are partnering together to um, make a distilling. Uh, degree program yes uh in tennessee um that is specifically targeted towards you know minorities and um you know folks that may not have that representation in the you know whiskey community in general um but so you know all you know purchasing this bottle you know goes to fund that stuff yeah yeah you're a fan of bourbon you're a fan of tennessee whiskey um i would definitely pick this up um i mean if you're a fan of jack daniels Whatever expression of Jack Daniels, there's about a thousand of them. Um, I think this might be the purest expression of, you know, what the actual Jack Daniels learned to. You know, I've, I've never, I've never drank Jack Daniels neat. I've only had shots. Yeah. Or now, or in Coke. Yeah, but specifically non mixed. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. I've only ever taken a shot. Yeah. This actually makes me want to go back and revisit Jack Daniels in this capacity. I think yeah. we, I think we need to... We avoided it for episode one because we wanted to do something old world. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we need to bump that up in priority because I really do want... Actually, I really do want to take a look at it in the same capacity now. Yeah. Like, that has... No, I, I definitely agree. Lit a fire under my butt. Um, it's got a fire in my, like, chestal region, too. <laughs> yeah, it's... But, that's it, And that doesn't go out for a bit. Yeah. Um, feels good. Man, just like I said, drinking that on a cold day. Just feeling that warmth. Yeah. Man. So, speaking of going out. Yeah. Let's end it on a high note. Let's end it on a high note. Uh, so, um, banner. I've been used to doing the banner the last couple episodes. Yeah, you did take it. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you're sticking with the fanfare. Yeah. Yeah. I like doing it. Yeah. Anyway, so, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Comment down below. What do you like us to try? Um, absolutely check out the links in the description that we put down below because there's yeah. a lot of history and a lot of information that you need yeah, to catch up on. Yeah, there's stuff we didn't touch on that's definitely interesting. I'm a, I'm a history buff, and I spent hours just going through rabbit holes. I find, as I get older, like I'm more and more interested in history. Yeah. Anyway, comment, like, subscribe. Enjoy us. We enjoy you. Yes. Please enjoy us. <laughs> and remember, no matter how you like your whiskey, that's the right